God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. We are Abundant Grace Church. I'm Bishop Ramon de Murray. I'm the pastor of the church. And truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall all rejoice and be glad in it. Our message title today is God is Sovereign Over All Things, or God's Sovereignty Over All Things. He is Sovereign. And our main verse will be from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1 and verse 11, which reads as follows, firstly from the King James Version, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Now the Good News Bible renders it, all things are done according to God's plan and decision, and God chose us to be his own people in union with Christ because of his purpose, based on what he decided from the beginning. And as I said the other week, we have no idea and we cannot measure and will never attempt to measure when the beginning was. We cannot attempt to measure eternity because there is no measurement because in order to measure something, you have to have a starting point from point A to point B. So we have no starting point for in the beginning and we have no ending point, therefore, in the end because we know not of any end. So we can't measure the time element. The sovereign decree of God, His eternal and effectual plan, establishes all things that happen in the universe. As humans, we always do what we most desire to do in every set of circumstances, but God, through our choice, is able to bring about the outcome He desires without violating our will. Understand that we do have a free will. But our free will has limits on it. That's why we have what we call law. You have a free will to do things, but you don't have a free will to do whatever you want because there are limits on mankind. Because you don't like somebody, you can't just go out and kill them or beat them up. You have laws to contend with. Just because you feel like speeding 120 miles an hour, you have a free will to do it. That doesn't mean that you are permitted to do it because you have speed limits on which you must follow. And if you don't and you get stopped, by the law, you pay for expressing your free will to speed or to break the law. Now, as humans, we sometimes think that we are above human law. And if we think we are above human law, then we also think we are above God's law. Because God establishes laws. And these laws are meant for those in Christ and those out of Christ. As it says, it rains on the just the same as the unjust. If you have a catastrophe, the just will die the same as the unjust. But the eternal destiny is what makes the difference, where you stand in the judgment. In any situation, while the ends toward which God and his creatures aim may overlap, the desires motivating God and those motivating his creatures do not always match. Our desires don't always match the desires of God. That's correct. We might think that this is what God wants us to do. And a lot of times we make the wrong decisions because we feel like, well, I think God wants me to do this. Okay, everybody's going to the mission field, going to this country. So because everybody's going there, does that mean that God has called you to go? No. Or the majority of people are going to this church here. Does that mean that God has called you to go to that church, to leave your church where you're at and go? No. A lot of times our desires don't match up with God's desires for our lives. Okay? That's why we must seek Him. And until we have an answer, until we have peace, we don't make a move. We stay in one place. God in His created moral agents, such as humans and angels, simultaneously act to ultimately fulfill the decree of God. But while God's purposes for bringing about a certain end are always righteous, those of His creatures are sometimes sinful. Now, some people won't like to hear that. But that's the way it is. Sometimes we have a desire to do something that God hasn't called us to do. Therefore, we do it out of disobedience because that's not what God called us to do. But we did it because we want to do it. Okay? We want to achieve a certain end when that might not be God's plan for us or for his kingdom. No one can stand before God and say, you made me do it against my will. No, nope, nobody can do that. But people try to say that. But that's not the way it is. So, we can never blame God when we fall into sin. So let's pray that God will give us wills inclined to serve Him in righteousness. Today we're going to open up with Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 9, which reads as follows from the King James Version. Have you made known unto us the mystery of His will, according to His good pleasure, which He has purposed in Himself? Now the Good News Bible renders it, 
God did what he had purposed and made known to us the secret plan he had already decided to complete by means of Christ. From the beginning, as we know from our other teaching series, the blame game, remember that? A few weeks back, three parts. Well, here we have that Christ from the beginning, or the Word of God. The moment that Adam and Eve sinned, God instituted that plan. But that plan was put in place before the foundations of the world. Well, in the beginning, because God knew it was going to happen. God didn't forget that it would happen. God wasn't naive that it was going to happen. He knew it was going to happen. So the whole, his whole plan for creation, for the ages, was set in place in the beginning. So when was the beginning? I don't know. But we know when he, he, well, he actually instituted it from before the foundations of the world. And then he brought up the thought of that plan in the garden. But he instituted it about 4,000 years later. And know that. He made people aware that this was going to happen, that the Deliverer was going to come. And that's what we call Christmas, when the Deliverer, or the Word of God, became flesh. Now, through the years, the 4,000 years, God sent humans in the mindset of the Messiah that would come. He sent Moses as a Deliverer to start the process of bringing God's people out of slavery into the land of of milk and honey. But yet they still refused to believe God's plan and sinned and were punished and roamed in the desert for 40 years and died off. Those that had doubt. So as we see, God had a plan, but not everybody believed the plan. And then let's go to Christ. When Christ came and announced that he was the Messiah, they didn't believe him either. Matter of fact, they still don't believe him, that Christ was the Messiah, right? They're still looking for the Messiah. But for us as Christians, we know that Christ is the long-awaited Messiah. And that's why we celebrate the birth of salvation, which is the word that became flesh, who we know to be as Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And the one that we hope to see when we leave this life and enter into eternity. The one that will stand there and say, come on in, my good and faithful servant. He will say, Father, I know him, or I know her, when he says, welcome in. Amen. He made it known to us. How did he make it known to us? By his word and his spirit. When we're celebrating Christmas, we often read Luke chapter 1, at the birth of the Messiah. And the angel Gabriel coming to a woman named Mary, a virgin, let's say 16 years old, who was engaged to a man named Joseph. And the angel Gabriel spoke to her and said that the Messiah shall be born to her. So now we have that God, where the Father is the Father of the Messiah, Christ, but he had an earthly father, but he was a stepfather, or what we used to call growing up a foster father. But his mother was the real mother, who was impregnated by the Holy Spirit, not by sinful man, okay? And the seed was planted in her through the Holy Spirit. That's why Scripture says Jesus was born of a virgin. We have the proclamation that the mystery was to be revealed. And scripture told the Jewish people for years before it happened to the prophet Isaiah, when he pronounced it in his writing. And this could only take place through the sovereign will of God. I mean, this is but darkly covered. Let's say uh, there's a haze. We don't fully understand because of our finite minds. And only a little bit has been revealed to us through the ages, through the prophets the apostles. We don't have a full understanding. If we did, then we wouldn't have to walk by faith and not by sight. But we don't have a full understanding. That's why it's dim. It's like putting something in a glass that has dirty water. The thing we put in is in the glass, but we can't see it clearly to distinguish what it really looks like. But we know it's there, okay? That's an observation. So we continue to believe that it is there and that one day it will be cleared up. And we will see it. But we have to see it with a mind, with a spiritual mind. Because a lot of people, even if they see it in the physical, they won't believe it because it's spiritually discerned. They can't see it for what it really is. So therefore, they will not believe it. It is partially hidden from us as believers, but it was totally hidden from an unbeliever. Or they would come to the light. Or they would come to the truth. And unless the Holy Spirit reveals the truth to an unbeliever, they'll never see it. So, because it has what? It has heights and depths and surpasses all the knowledge of even us as true believers. That's why we walk by faith, as I said, and not by sight. This was forecast in the beginning. And look at my age, over 70, I'm still learning. There's people over 100 years old, Christians, still, they're still learning. We learn every day. 
We can never say, I have arrived, I know it all. I've read the whole Bible, I understand everything. Now that's not the truth. Because the Word will say to us what God wants us to receive. And not what we think. When we start thinking, like, I know everything, then we will find out that we really don't know everything. Only what God allows us to see. That's why we have that glass with, the, with, with something in it. And we can't really see it all to really distinguish it, what it is. So, unless God reveals something to you, you don't have the answer. And don't try to make up an answer or tell somebody something that isn't true because then you are misleading them. And then you are coming against God and God's purpose for mankind. Now, when we think that we have all the answers, we are not only deceiving ourselves, but we are deceiving others at the same time. And when we deceive others, here's what we have. We have what we call a double whammy. We have a twofold sin that we have to pay for. The sin against ourselves and the sin against others. That's why I'm very meticulous when I preach a message. And not that I won't make a mistake, but I try my best not to make a mistake. Now, if I do it unconsciously, that's something else. But if I was to stand here and do it purposely, I have sinned before I even preach the message. And this is what happens when a message is preached and it is sugar-coated to sound good, to please itching ears, as they call it. To say, oh, everything's okay. Oh, yes, you can do this. Just repent every time you do it. It's that kind of thing. Or you can be angry at, at your brother. Sure, you have a right to be angry. That's human nature. And they leave out. Be angry by sinning up. And we talk about be angry, that means being angry because of sinfulness. Or because what people are trying to do sinfully to you and cause you to stumble. You, you cannot live a life of sin and have peace. Or preach a gospel that isn't true and have peace in your own life because you will be fooled yourself in the end. You will be led down the wrong path in the end. You will be accursed in the end. Because Paul says... If anyone comes to you preaching any other gospel than what we have preached to you previously, let them be accursed. And he says again, let them be accursed. So anyone that knowingly preaches a false message. When I'm saying, I'm just not talking about preachers from the pulpit. I'm talking about people that are trying to sway your minds to think in another direction. I'm talking about other religions. And I'm talking about people that just want to impress upon you their way of thinking. You don't have to be in a pulpit to do that. People are telling false stories, and we see that right now, if you watch the news. False stories trying to get attention, trying to build up their business, trying to get people to watch their news broadcast. They're trying to draw people to them with untruths being spoken, or to bring people down, or to discredit people, or to dis destroy people's lives. That's the same thing. But the greater sin is when you do it knowingly, professing to know Jesus Christ, or professing to be a Christian and professing to only speak the truth because man judges the outside, but God judges the inside. And there is no sin that will go unpunished. No sin. So my beloved, understand that God has a plan and a purpose. And this is all we're going to cover for today. He has a plan and a purpose. And that plan is that none should perish, but all should come to the light of the truth. God established his plan in the beginning. And it was revealed in the garden. It was revealed through the ages, through the prophets, through the patriarchs, and through the apostles. But yet, people refuse to believe. And they discredit the word of God. They discredit the things of God because their lives are sinful. And they don't want to be accountable to God for anything. Therefore, on the day of judgment, should they not repent before they leave this life, they will hear the most terrible phrase that anyone could ever hear. Depart from me. I never knew you. You worker of inequity. Okay? So keep that in mind. There is a price to be paid for sin. Unless you accept Christ, who has paid the price with his crucifixion, his death, burial, and resurrection, you will be doomed for eternity. Where the worm never dies. Where there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Where there is eternal fire and torment. And eternal means without end. It's forever and ever and ever. And just put etc. on the end because you can go on and 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 there's no end. Okay? Therefore, I want to give you the opportunity to hear Jesus say, Come on in, my good and faithful servant. Instead of hearing him say, Depart from me, I never knew you. And to show you how much God loves you, he is allowing you to see this video today. 
and to hear this message titled, God is Sovereign Over All Things, or God's Sovereignty Over All Things, from Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 11. But today we only covered Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 9. So if you have never accepted Jesus Christ of Nazareth as your Savior and Lord, I want to lead you in a prayer today. It's not a hard prayer to pray. You just must believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, that he was born of a virgin, crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven. This guy sitting at the right hand of God the Father, in all power and all majesty, from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. See, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. So my beloved, as our message was last week, Jesus is the door, the only door, the only gate in his sheepfold, which is eternal life. If you would like to do that today, accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, I want to pray with you. Let us pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, we come before you today praying for salvation for those that have never accepted your gift of eternal life through your Son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. I believe that he was born, crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven, and is now sitting at your right hand in a place of power and majesty, from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. I believe it today. I believe what the message said today, that you are sovereign over all things, Father God. And by sending Jesus Christ, born of a virgin, crucified, died, buried, and risen from the dead on the third day, I have eternal life. If I accept your plan of salvation. And I accept it today. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, that he was crucified, died, buried, and rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven, is now sitting at your right hand in place of power and majesty, where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. I believe this today. I believe it with my whole heart. I accept this as being truth today. And I repent of my sins. I ask you to wash me and cleanse me in the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm sorry for my sins. I'm truly sorry. Please forgive me save me from torment of hell. Thank you. And I believe that by faith, that through my repentance and profession and confession of faith in Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord, that I have received eternal life. Thank you, Father, for saving me today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. My beloved, if you said that prayer today, let me be the first to welcome you into the kingdom of God. Now what I want you to do is go to a Bible preaching, teaching church, get an audience with a pastor, tell him what happened. Ask him to anoint you with oil, to pray with you, pray for you, and to baptize you by full immersion in water. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ask him to mentor you, to give you a Bible if you don't have one, and to help you in your newfound faith in Jesus Christ. Then what I would like you to do is contact me by email at abundant.grace at att.net. And just earmark it, pastor, and tell me what happened, and I will pray for you. You can also contact me through our website at www.abundantgracechurch.net or through our other website at www.abundantgraceofmidlothian.com. Midlothian is spelled M-I-D-L-O-T-H-I-A-N. And you can also just Google my name, Bishop Ramon Di Maria, or just Google Abundant Grace Church or Abundant Grace Church of Midlothian. Thank you for being with us today. Our message title has been God's Sovereignty over all things, or God is sovereign over all things, from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 11. Thank you for being with us, and continue to watch our broadcast. And once again, you can search for us on Google, and you will find all of our messages and everything else. Thank you for being with us today. Go with God, and have peace. God bless you, and go with God.